<laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the book trip after dark. Tonight, we are here with the USA Today bestselling author, Cherise Sinclair, talking about her new book, Show Me Baby, part of the 1001 Dark Nights series. Show Me Baby is a novella in her popular Masters of the Shadowland series. Um, and Cherise is renowned for writing heart-wrenching stories with laugh-out-loud dialogue, devastating dominance, and absolutely sizzling sex. Even Rolling Stone magazine called her the ascendant erotica queen. Um, under the cover reviews says that whenever I ask for BDSM recommendations, I'm told the same two words all the time, Cherise Sinclair. Uh, her awards range from the National Leather Award to the Romantic Times Reviewer Choice nomination to the Goodreads BDSM Group's Best Author of the Year. Uh, and today we're giving away some of Sharice's favorite things. So after the chat, head on over to booktrib.com to enter to win. And as always, remember to sign up at Booktrib to get the latest on live chats, or giveaways, original content, and more. So without further ado, please help me welcome Sharice Sinclair. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hi. I'm terrified and happy to be here at the same time. You'll be great, I swear. <laughs> um, but before we get into viewer questions, uh, for those of us who aren't as familiar with the Masters of the Shadowland series, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about it? Okay, the Masters of the Shadowlands is a series that set around a BDSM club, a very exclusive BDSM club in Florida. And each book is written around a separate, a different couple because I have a fondness for when people first fall in love, that first look, that mm -hmm. the gaze, the first touch. So instead of having a continuing series about one couple, each book has a different couple in it. And people seem to like them. Excellent. And so in Show Me Baby, we have Rainy and Jake. And is this, in a, I get, this isn't the first time they've been together, or is it? Well, this, it's the first time they've been together in this series. Yes, Rainey's appeared okay. in previous books, and so is Jake, but they have never gotten together. So what happens in this one? No spoilers, but what, can you give us a synopsis, synopsis of Show Me Baby? Well, um, when Dark Knights asked me for a book, I wasn't sure what to do about it. I was like, okay, now what am I going to do? But Liz Berry, <laughs> to you, um, requested <laughs> that I do um, Rainy, who was one of the trainees in the Shadowlands. She's uh, a plus size woman and kind of a slum rat. Grew up mm -hmm. in the slums, bad background and everything. And But Liz, of course, instead of giving her somebody similar, said she wanted Master Jake to get Rainy. So Jake is rich and from an aristocratic background and has never had these problems. And so it was really fun seeing if I could put these two together and let them find things in common. But, you know, the things of the heart really are what's important. So loyalty. Mm courage and intelligence all those they did find things in common no spoilers right. now no spoilers <laughs> um so do you think that they'll get together or they'll stay together in any subsequent books or are you going to move on to a different couple i always move on to a different couple but i always show mm -hmm. the previous couples in all the next books so you will see Rainy and Master Jake again and how they're doing. Yes. Excellent. Who's that little kitty behind you? <laughs> uh, I know people always ask if I put my cats and my dogs in the book. Well, yes. <laughs> see? That's my story. She's so cute. Oh, so cute. We're big cat people at Book Trip, definitely. Okay. <laughs> um, so, Tony wants to know uh, if you could be a character in your books, who would you be and why? Um, I'd probably be Beth 
because, and that in Breaking Free, she ended up with Master Nolan. Um, I loved her courage. I loved the way that she had such a horrible background and she overcame it, moved on, and had the courage to actually go after what she wanted. That to me, I love when women manage to pick their pasts and just keep going. It's just so awesome. So, yeah, that's who I would like to be when I grow up, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, now, this is an interesting question from Jane. Jane wants to know, do you prefer to write a series of books that have an overall story arc or a standalone novel that can be devoured in one sitting? Now, we know that you have the series. Um, but do you have a preference? Are you gonna are you gonna do any standalones, or what are your plans for that sort of thing? Um, I adore series because I mm. know people like to come back and visit the same characters and see right. how people are doing in the future. But at the same time, I really love standalone books where you can finish it and go, yes, happy ending, life is good. So. I combine the two, and that's what I've always done. You can read any of my books as a standalone, even if you start at right. the entire end of the series. But because they're all tied together with similar characters, it feels like you're coming home when you go back and finish. Mm -hmm. What was the first erotica book you've ever read? How did you get into the genre? Um, I was really sick one summer. I was just deathly mm -hmm. ill, and I felt so ugly and unsexy, and so I was reading some erotic books, and I went, I want to write one. So for my very <laughs> own self, I wrote Club Shadowlands. It was mine, and oh, wow. I had no idea of sending it in, but other writer friends said, well, you finished it. You should send it in. Let's do one. So... I did, and oh my God, they bought it. It was horrible. I was like, no! <laughs> and yeah, then that was the launch of my career. When, what did you do before you started writing erotica books? Actually, um, I started off writing Western historical, and I had mm. one book, and then the whole market kind of died. So, my poor little book. <laughs> um, let's see here. Sue wants to know how long it takes you to write a complete book from beginning to end. I love to say I could do it every two months, but unfortunately it takes closer to four to six months to write a book from beginning to end. I'm slower than oh. that. <laughs> um, now... So going back to Masters of the Shadowlands, um, what, you know, how did you, did you do, I'm sure you get a lot of questions about research, um, but I wanted to know if it was, uh, you know, how you came up with the idea, and not, you know, the idea for the club itself, uh, you know, the name, everything like that. I'm, um, okay, the name. I'm a fantasy reader. I love fantasy, and I've always loved mm -hmm. Summerlands. So when I started writing erotic BDSM clubs, the Shadowlands was kind of an easy um, slide into that. And mm -hmm. okay, what was the rest of that question? <laughs> um, questions. it was a it was a research question. Um, <laughs> I wanted to know if it's based on you know any clubs that you're familiar with, or did you just completely come, you know, build this from the depths of your imagination? Yes, I visit the clubs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Um, my dear heart mm -hmm. won't go with me to the clubs, he won't play in public, so I have permission to go in and not touch, but to a, a lot of the scenes Experience? in my books are like the fireplace scenes, some of the wax scenes. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are directly out of the clubs that I've visited. Um, so I do that. I talk to a lot of people. 
I've got friends who are life stylers 24-7, master's life types. And mm -hmm. if I don't know something, sometimes I'll even go on FetLife.com and those people will be in with me. I was like, what's asking this guy about his uh, piercing? He's got a piercing, um, <laughs> lock piercing. So I was asking him what it felt like when he made love. And he was willing to answer me. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now, what was it like? You get you have such strong reviews from readers. People love your books. What was it like the first time you started to hear that, um, you know, that kind of response for this new genre you started writing? Ever, I, I know some people, some writers get um, complaints from some writers, but you know, I almost never do. People seem to, hmm. you know, I, I apparently have enough on the cover so I don't get too many people wandering into my books who weren't expecting BDSM. And, and I've told <laughs> publishers before, please make sure, you know, all my, my first books always showed that, you know, you are getting a BDSM book. And so I get surprised readers going, oh my God, they're beating on women in this <laughs> book. And it's like, no, sometimes yeah. they beat on the men, right? But yeah, it's <laughs> opportunity beatings, really. Mm -hmm. so, exactly. Yeah, but I don't, I don't seem to get very many of those. It's very good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Now, how did you get involved with the One Thousand and One Dark Knight series? This is a question from Sarah. Um, I was stalked. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> she um. Apparently. The books that I write fit in with what they were looking for, and mm -hmm. uh, the the two cohorts who are doing it apparently had read my books and wanted me as one mm -hmm. of them. But Liz came and found me at a convention and sat down and just got an introduction just to make sure that I would fit in with the crew that she was recruiting. So I'm very proud that I was able to. Is worthy of that. Mm -hmm. Well, it fits in perfectly with the series. It certainly does. Um, now, I have to ask, I have to bring it up, and Michael brought it up here too. Um, it says, people are still going crazy about Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, you know, the movie's coming out. Um, and I know that, you know, there's a lot of mixed feelings within the, uh, you know, BDSM author community about Fifty Shades, but have you read it? You know, what are your thoughts? Um, I'd just love to hear your take on that. I actually, yes, I did read the, the Fifty Shades, and I love the romance. I thought the BDSM, some of the DS dynamics, the dominant submissive dynamics were very good, were very well written. Some were not, um, but she isn't into the lifestyle. I mm -hmm. was a little down on the way that she thought she could cure a sadist because uh, you know, I've got some sadist friends and uh, they're not so willing to be cured. Um, mm -hmm. That said, she opened up the entire genre to mainstream. A lot of people have mm -hmm. found yeah. out about their own um, personalities and she's widen the education for everybody. So in that light, I think she's done an awesome job. Yeah. Will you be first in line to see the movie when it comes out? I will, yes. <laughs> so if, if you could cast Rainy and Jake uh, for you know your movie adaptation of Show Me Baby, who would you choose to play those roles? Um, sort of based on Jesse Velka. Mm -hmm. um, really gorgeous actor and mm -hmm. Rainy was based on a plus size model who, um, and I'm not sure there are any actresses who would quite fit that because mm. she loved her body. She's gorgeous. She's um, just beautiful that way. And our actresses on screen tend to be 
underweight. So yeah, I'm, I don't know yeah. who I can speak for that. Oh, good question to share. Um, okay, I have a good question here from Jill. Jill asks, she says, any advice for people who want to test their hand in the erotic novel world but are a bit timid and concerned about what people might think? Okay, pen name first. <laughs> if you're concerned about what people <laughs> think, don't tell people what you're writing. And then just let it all hang out. Go for it. And spare your blushes. Just have a good time and write it at the time. Um, my kids didn't know that I was writing erotic romance, and I kept this, you know, this past year or two has been the first time that I've shown up really outside the cave for, because I had young kids, and I didn't want anybody knowing what I was doing, because mm -hmm. it could hurt the kids. So, um, the names and, and be discreet, or you can be like other friends of mine and just say, this is what I write, and it's fun, and what, you don't mm -hmm. like sex? And do it that way. It just depends on who you yeah. are. Definitely. That's some good advice. Um, now, and Ashley wants to know who your most challenging character to write was. In Show Me Baby, was there anyone who, oh, you know, you had a hard time? Yeah. Show Me Baby and then the series. And then the whole series. The hardest one I found to write yeah. was actually the sadist and the masochist, uh, Master Sam and Linda, because it's mm -hmm. not my kid. Um, so I had to end up doing a lot of interviewing and asking people how they worked it and why, because, um, you know, a little pain's kind of fun, but a lot of pain is so not me. And so they were mm. more difficult. To relate to and hopefully to get over. Yeah, I'm, well, I think your fans definitely think you did a good job. Um, now Jay wants to know who do you think predominantly uh, reads your books, men or women? It, it's really I probably run about ninety percent women. I get letters from guys now and then, and doms, <laughs> doms to read the books, get ideas, and it's like oh. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I feel like apologizing to their siblings. It's like, I didn't mean to do that to you, honey. But um, yeah, it's mostly women. And I write mostly. Mm -hmm. um, now, Paula wants to know uh, do you think it's possible for someone to find love in a BDSM world? Well, yeah. I think there might be. A <laughs> Definitely. It's like, yeah. Yes. Um, I, <laughs> I'm not supposed to love my dear heart. Um, yes, you can mm -hmm. definitely find love in a BDSM world for sure. I, I have readers actually who write and say they finally found somebody because they stepped into the world. Oh. So yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I think there are a lot of misconceptions out there about what, you know, the BDSM world is really about. There is, there is. Um, it's hard to explain that the BDSM is, it's like a cafeteria menu. You can kind of pick and choose what kids you want in it. it. It's not all, okay, if I'm in BDSM, I'm going to be flogged every night and chained up and put in a cage. It's like, no, 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 no. Um, some people like a little pain. I have people I know that never do that. They, they're just not into pain at mm -hmm. all. Never there. It's more into the control and the dominance. Um, and other ones mm -hmm. who are just total masochists, and they don't want the dominance. It's uh, it's a pick and choose your kid. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Ashley wants to know where you came up with the idea for the title Show Me Baby. Were there any other titles you had in mind for this novella? Oh, gee. Um, yeah, I, I went through a whole bunch of titles, but I don't remember what they were anymore. Um, <laughs> Show Me Baby was uh, kind of because I knew I was going to get Master Jake and Rainy together in the very mm -hmm. beginning of the book um, with him in charge of her. So 
I knew near the end of the book that I was going to need her to prove that she really did love him and he prove it to her because we were both kind of suspicious that way. So mm -hmm. that's kind of where the book came from. Now, Amy wants to know, she says, I have to ask, do you get to meet the models that are on the covers of your book? You know, Kristen Proby did that. I was like, I'm so mad at her. <laughs> she, she, and the model she picked took off and actually went out. No, I've never gotten to meet my models, which isn't fair, don't you think? Mm. I should get to meet them. I think so. Yeah. There should be a meet and greet, a mixer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh that is. <laughs> um, let's see. Now, Bailey says, what's the most difficult thing about being an author, um, and what's the most rewarding for you? The most difficult thing is, like, you never seem to get enough. There's always more to do. You mm. have to kind of show up every day, plant that butt in the chair, and do the work. And nobody's really standing over you making you do that. So mm -hmm. um, it's very self-motivated. And if you when you get to the bad parts and it's like, oh my God, I'll never get through this scene. I don't like this scene. It's so difficult. You still have to show up and do it so that you can fix it later. Right. Um, mm -hmm. The most rewarding is seeing it all come together when you're when you're near the end of the book and realizing that you've actually got a cool story going. And then it's even nicer when people come back and tell you that they liked your story and it it touched something mm -hmm. in them and I love feedback from you guys so thank you so very much for reaching out to me and letting me know that you mm -hmm. like my story because it, it gets me in that chair the next day. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What's the hardest scene for you to write? Is there a type of scene you dread, you know? Um what's and then also what's the most fun scene for you to write? Um I love action scenes. I love blood and gore. <laughs> Is that not bad? Um, mm -hmm. And I love the the beginning of all the romance and the first touches and, and the first seductions and stuff. Sometimes when I get mm -hmm. into the more intense BDSM scenes, those are a little harder to write because I have to manage to balance all the emotions with the physical and not get right. carried over so that it's not just all physical because I mean you know that's not what it's about really even if, mm -hmm. even if you're screwing somebody's brains out it's still about the emotion <laughs> yes I'm censored so, on here I should have asked are there any words we're that not censored okay <laughs> no this is book trip after dark we're covered don't worry <laughs> I can see these little blurp <laughs> nope, not at all. Um, so let's see here. Um, Michael wants to know if you listen to music while writing, and what songs are on your most played list. If that's if, if that's something that you do, does music help you get in the mood for certain different scenes? It does, and um, when I'm writing something emotional, I tend to go for like soundtracks. Mm. For a while, I was doing the Titanic soundtrack a lot. <laughs> Goodness is like, mm -hmm. it's very emotional, and you know, things were going downhill for my poor little couple, and it's like, let's sink that ship. Um, <laughs> I, I listen to a lot of stuff uh, like vocalists like Josh Groban, and, um, who tends to sing mm -hmm. in Italian, so I don't get caught up in the words, but I still get the emotions from him. And then if I start doing like a dungeon scene or something, I'll switch over to Nine Inch Nails, Rom Queen, things like that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Let's see here. What else do we have? Now, Caitlin asks, what's the best advice you've gotten um, from uh, a mentor? Or, or appear when it comes to writing. Something to the effect of get your butt in the chair and do it. Um, 
Good advice. You can fix crap, but you can't fix a blank page. I think that's from Nora. Um, mm -hmm. And then from other people. And the other one is if you're bored, your readers are going to be bored. So don't write boring shit. <laughs> it's another good one. Now, Jesse asks, are we going to get a book about Mistress Anne? That would be awesome. Hold on a minute. My computer just okay. put me. There. It just, you know, blank screened me. Am I back? Yes, <laughs> you're back. That was kind of strange. She's good. like, oh, I'm on screensaver. Is this a good thing? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you're back Mistress in action. Anne. I might. So are I might. we? I yeah. Never thought I'd write about um, a female dom, nope. but people keep asking for her. And Ben says the security guard seems to think that he's interested, and it's like, hello, honey, you're not into kink. <laughs> this, is, this is the most evil, nasty mistress in the whole place, and you want her? It's like, but you know, uh, I'm not one to argue with the characters, so mm -hmm. we'll see what happens, right? Yes. So yes. Ha it's looking good, and she wants it. Mm -hmm. Do you find sometimes when you're writing a book about a different couple, um, and there's a character who is just coming through strongly to you, and you, when do you decide, you know, who you're going to write about for the next book? Does it just speak to you, or do you have a list and you just check them off as they go? Uh, part of that didn't come through. Oh, um, I'll, I'll be happy to repeat it. I just wanted to know um, how you decide which couple gets the next book, you know, or which two characters come together for the next book. Does it happen sometimes when you're writing? Um, about another couple, and then one character just really screams out to you, and um, you know you identify that, and just kind of put it to the side for the next one. Very much, yes. Um, a lot of my books tend to be because somebody stepped forward and said, "I want the next book." They were supposed to be a secondary character mm -hmm. and a throwaway, and that's really hard to do when you put a dom on the page. They don't get thrown away very easily. Mm -hmm. My Shadowlands was supposed to stop after the third book. Um, oh, wow. And then I said, okay, well, I, Cohen needed a story. So I gave him his story. But then it was supposed to stop, you know. That was it. Mm -hmm. It was done. I'd saved him. And then this Southern lawyer came on. And I think, oh, my God. I have to do something to ruffle him up a bit. So and then it just kept going. I'm not sure how that happened. But, yes. They they show up and then Mistress Anne has told me she's gonna hurt me if she doesn't. <laughs> well, you bet. And Jesse her, uh, Henriquez might hurt you too if you don't get that one put together as well. <laughs> um, well, we're almost yeah. out of time here. I really want to thank you for stopping by. It's been fabulous. Um, you know, this is again for those who just came in. Cherise Sinclair, and we're talking about her new book, Show Me Baby, a part of the One Thousand and One Dark Knight series. Um, and definitely check out her other, you know, her longer series. It's Masters of the Shadowlands. Um, and remember that we're giving away her favorite things over at booktrib.com. So head over there after the chat and enter to win. Thank you again, Cherise. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you all for showing up. I really appreciate it. We had a great time. I'm alone here. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Bye.